The Magic Book community has been buzzing the last few weeks with the announcement of a new series. Letters from Juan, and this happens to be Volume 1. In this episode, I'll walk you through my thoughts on this volume and help you decide if this book should be for you. While there were some positive aspects, there were also some significant shortcomings. Can the pros outweigh the cons? Let's find out. Juan Tamariz is one of the biggest names in magic worldwide, and many consider him to be the greatest living master of the art of magic. In fact, Juan Tamariz is so widely respected that some people suggested that this book needs no review and that you should simply buy it. So the question is, does it live up to the hype? This new book is the first in a series of limited one-time printing books by Penguin Magic. According to the trailer, there are six planned volumes in this series. There are four tricks in volume one and an unknown number in future volumes, although there are some hints towards the end of this first entry. These smaller books are supposed to differ from previous offerings from Juan because of their intimate letter-writing nature and because he has never released these tricks. He's kept them as personal secrets. If the first book is any indication, these are definitely geared for the intermediate performer. There's one self-working trick in this first volume, the color separation routine. In order to perform the other three tricks in this book, you'll need to be able to force one card given six opportunities to do so. You'll need to be comfortable with the Mexican turnover, the paddle move and other cigarette manipulation style slights, card palms, and handling a packet of cards that's more than what it seems. It could also help if you know some false shuffles. None of this is super difficult, but again, it's not really geared toward the beginner. Not only that, but because there are only four tricks in the book, it's really not going to help a beginner accumulate a lot of knowledge quickly. At $25 and with all of the big names hyping this book, even sight unseen at times, is it worth it? This episode of Air, I want to make it clear in what I'm about to tell you that I have a tremendous amount of respect for not only all of the magicians who did give this praise, but also Juan himself. But we still need to know if this book is worth your hard-earned dollars. Let's break this down into two sections, the things I liked and the things that I didn't like. First, the things that I liked. I like that Juan is sharing tricks that he has supposedly kept to himself for years. It's fun to think that he has a cabinet of magic in his house that has never been shared with anyone else. And in fact, at the beginning of this book, he shares a little story about an interaction with the professor at the Magic Castle, where the professor shared with a young Juan Tamariz some secrets that he was not allowed to share with any of his friends. And this served as Juan's inspiration to now share some of these secrets with us. So what are these tricks that he's kept to himself all these years? The first effect is a card trick where the ace, or what he calls the shovel card, is used to reveal a participant's card after they choose one of six random cards that they have picked from the deck. There's a color separation routine that can be used to end any series of effects using mnemonica. A clever and visual stand-up color-changing knife routine, complete with Juan's own script, where the knife changes colors at the fingertips multiple times. And finally, a stand-up oil and water routine using nothing more than eight borrowed cards and multiple visual changes. In addition to the tricks, he also provides some insight or history or alternate handlings at the end of the tricks, and that was a really nice touch. For example, at the end of the oil and water routine, he gives a brief analysis of the oil and water plot, where it came from, variations in history, and I thought it was interesting, even though I found it ironic that he points out that magicians love oil and water, but lay people, not as much. He also provides some alternate handlings for the oil and water, as well as the color-changing knife trick. I also really liked an adaptation of Al Koran's Lazy Man's card trick that he uses as an introduction to the color-changing knife routine. I could actually see myself using that piece of the trick as a standalone routine. And the oil and water routine is certainly unlike anything that I've seen, even though I'm not a huge advocate of oil and water. Now for some of the things that I found lacking. I didn't really care for the length. This book is under 40 pages of actual content, and it's only four tricks. 
This makes it smaller than most lecture notes, and the benefit of most lecture notes is that you get to interact with the person teaching you and ask any questions or clarifications that you may need. That's not the case here. And while the tricks are okay, two out of the four seemed pretty basic to me. For example, the ace shovel trick at the beginning didn't seem to really offer anything new from where I sit. You introduce the ace, talk about it being the shovel, set it aside, the participant chooses a card, the cards are shuffled, they get to pick six random cards, they're laid out in a semicircle, they get to choose one of those cards, and when you flip it over, it's their card and you use the ace to turn it over. The color separation finale will be limited in its appeal and application. You have to be using mnemonica to make it happen, and you will have to deal through all 52 cards while you talk. At the end, the cards have separated into red and black. There's a little bit more to it than that, but that's the essence of what your participants will likely remember. I also didn't love the production values. All of the photos are black and white, which is adequate, but when you're talking about a color-changing knife routine, and given the size of the book, it felt like it would have been a nice touch to have some color. Not to mention that in a few places, I found that there was a lack of pictures. Sure, all of the pictures were adequate in the main portions of the routine to explain how to do what he's describing, but when he starts to get into some of the alternate handlings, it felt like they just ignored that for any pictures. There's another small beef that I had that might be a little picky, but I have a reason, so bear with me. I'm talking about the font choice. They used Monotype Corsiva for the portion of the book that was the letter from Juan. That's actually a very formal font, usually used on certificates that you would print for people or on formal invitations to events. And the whole point of the letter is that it was supposed to be intimate and informal, so it felt like this font clashed with that idea. Whether or not the font made a difference, I don't think the book actually captured the intended intimate feel that they wanted. In fact, the only piece of this book that felt like a letter from Juan was the introduction and the conclusion of the book. And that's fairly typical to have that in a magic book, with an introduction written by the author in that more informal style. The rest felt like a very typical lecture note instruction for the tricks. In addition to the font issue, there's also a typo in the heading for the oil and water trick, which repeats itself on every other page of that trick. While that's not really a problem of itself, it just doesn't scream quality. Maybe you think I'm being picky, and that kind of brings me to my final point, which is the price. For $25 on such a small booklet, I expected more attention to detail and better production values. It certainly takes less time to proofread and edit a small book than it does a massive tome. And if the tricks had been killer, it might have made up for some of these seemingly nitpicky issues. But as I already mentioned, I didn't find anything revolutionary or crazy about the tricks that are described here. And at $6.25 a trick, I didn't find anything that I think I would have bought had it been offered in a video or standalone format. And there wasn't enough material to make up for some of the weaker effects. If the series continues at $25 a book with four tricks, that means that after six volumes, you will have spent $150. That's enough to buy three normal-sized books of magic filled with dozens of tricks each. Or you could even buy Juan's massive theory book, The Magic Rainbow. I certainly don't want to convey that I got nothing from this. In fact, I happen to agree with Juan at the conclusion where he points out that we enrich ourselves as artists when we read and absorb ideas whether or not we can fit them into our own performances. But in conclusion, I was underwhelmed by this initial entry into the new series. If you're a massive Juan Tamaris fan, you may have found way more value in it than I did, and if so, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below. But if you want to see my list of books that won't break the bank and offer a tremendous amount of bang for the buck, then check out this video. As always, my friends, I appreciate you watching, and until next time, keep reading.